Hi everybody, Jo here. Thanks for popping in. Always lovely to spend time with you. Now today we're going to have a play and create this fabulous design. As you know, I'm a bit of a wreath girl, sorry, just something I love to do. And I love these coloured um, circular cards that we have at Lavinia. So when we had our new stamps, I had this idea in mind and couldn't wait to get playing. Little bit on the envelope as well, look. Again, permanent ink, a bit of Posca, so if it gets wet. Now, this is the idea, and I have to say, I am thinking a Christmas version. So, hmm, we'll, we'll go with an autumnal one for now. Now, some of you I know are going into spring, so you could make your own spring version, just saying. Again, mix and match it in your head. So we're going to use, so I'm just going to move that, pop that over there. We're going to use these round card blanks. Now this one is this lovely sort of charcoal grey colour, lovely quality. And then they do come in white and cream as well. I have to say I do think the cream's very classy. It's difficult choosing a favourite, but then I'm not very good at choosing a favourite anyway. So I'm going to use this beautiful colour and a few of you had asked me what you would do on one of these. So here we go. Now, I know some of you recently have had a bit of a, a problem with being able to stamp your circles. So my suggestion is use one of your lovely circle masks. And for this, we're going to come in first with our white pan pastel. And this one is the um, pearl medium one and the applicator. Oh, look. We've got some extra bits there. I'm just going to tap that off in the bin. So I'm going to pop that in the middle and I'm just going to do a little bit like we would if we were using our stencil brush to create a circle. And it's just two things. It's going to give me the shape, but also it's going to give me that lovely... Um, now I'm thinking wedding cards... I just want that sort of, um, this is lovely with ink on, on your white card. We've done this on the multifarious card and it just gives a sort of a, a suggestion of colour but also helps you know where to stamp. So I'm going to take that out of the way and I'm almost going to smudge that because I've still got my circle but I just almost want it a little bit more fuzzy. And then I'm going to come in with my finger and just fuzzy, and that's the only way I can almost blend the edge so it's a little bit more fuzzy. I just, I don't want it to be stark, I want it, and I think it looks quite magical when you blend the end. Look, you get that lovely mystical sort of feel, and that's the sort of idea. And also for me, it almost helps set the pan pastel. The more actual pastel I think you've got, on your work that's loose the more it's going to smudge but once I've smudged that into the card I've less chance of it moving so we'll wipe that and put that away we'll put our lid on there and it just gives me that lovely sort of magical glow so we'll add a little bit of stamping and I'm going to come in first with and this is on the oak leaves this one We'll use some permanent ink and first of all we're going to use pine cone. Now because I've got an idea of where to stamp this look, it will help with me to get that, that lovely wreath shape. Now I reckon we get four of these and this is just my first basic stamping. We're going to add more to it, so again we're going into that flower ranging mode. So this is our this is our core bit, our structure behind. And this fourth one, oh got a bit of ink on that block. Let's get rid of that. And this one is just going to marry up the two there. Lovely. And we've got that lovely shape. And again, we'll give that a wipe. I don't want Mr Inky Binky to feel left out, do I? And pop that back on there. So to add a little bit more shape, I'm going to bring in a couple of my stamps from the flower pots. Now, as you know, I'm a bit of a, I love these. I have a thing of these. And I'm going to, I've got one that's sort of more leafy and the one that's more like little buds. 
So I'm thinking the one that's little buds, I want to bring in some orange. So I'm going to bring in my summertime. And that now it's not going to look bright orange, but I just want it to give me that hint of orange. So I'm just going to work my way around, look. And for me, I'm just going to do the stamping on the outside first. And this is just random. And then I'm going to come in and do some stamping on the inside and just turning it as I go. Now it might be you like to do them both at the same time. Just going to add an extra one there. Now what I'm going to do is actually put it, so that's my base, that's my card opening. And just have a look and see. And I actually think I want another one there. And I'm looking at that shape, that overall shape. And actually, I think I'm going to put an extra one there. Right, I like that. So lid on there. And then this lovely feathery one, I'm going to come in with our lovely brilliance, our pigment, this Moonlight White Ink Pad. And like I say, I'm thinking for the Christmas version. And I just want to add some white look and I love how that looks so again I'm going to work my way around the outside first and again you'll have your own way of doing this and then I'm going to come in and add some it looks so frosty it looks lovely over that pan pastel So again, if I just pop it the way and I'm thinking just another one there, maybe second generation. But Oh, I like that. Happy with that. Lid on. And again, remember with this, that plastic, it's important that. And also just going to give my stamp a wipe and look, comes off straight away. So again, cleans up beautifully. Pop that over there. So that is the stamping. Now, I could just leave that like that if I wanted. I think that is beautiful. So I'm going to add some little decoupage items. But what I'll do is I'll add my Posca splats now. So I'm coming in with this lovely orange. And I'm just going to add around my wreath some organ just going to add some lovely and the orange just because I want with this being an autumnal one for me I want to add the orange tones but obviously I'm thinking when it comes Christmas I'm going to be using my white Posca aren't I see I'm so excited I want to do my Christmas one now I don't know about you but I get like that when I start crafting so we'll pop that up there and what I need to do now is just create these lovely oh I've got to stamp my bird so before we create those We'll stamp ourselves a little bird. So it's a good job I picked that up. Right, so get our little bird. And I'm thinking, where are we going to stamp him? Let's stamp him on this one. I'm going to stamp him in brown. I don't want to bring black in because obviously I've used brown and autumnal colours, haven't I? So we'll go back to the brown. Now, I may just get my head over this. I'm thinking, should we put him on this one here? Yeah. And he's actually planted, so happy with that. So I can put that over there to dry. And get back to our main features, which is we're going to stamp the lovely pumpkin pad and one of the ickle pumpkins. And again, I'm really into using up my scraps. I'm going to stamp these in brown and don't worry I have got some that I've cut out so we'll we'll colour one and then we'll but I have got them cut out ready and let's get a ickle pumpkin now I reckon see if we could get a few of him on here 
And again, I do this when I'm using my scraps up. I will literally fill the whole page. And the other thing is I've stamped the broomstick look. Now, this is a small broomstick, but again, look at that. I really do. I'm really into using my scraps up. So they're all stamped in the pine cone. Now, to colour them, I've used, right, I'll save that scrap for later, my um, clean colour brushes, and I will put the colours for you in the description box below. But basically, I've used a light brown, which is the mustard for the um, broomstick, but with a little bit of yellow. So all I've done, and again, you know me, it's like a quick bit of yellow at the top. And then with the light brown, and I've just gone in like this. There we go. Simple as that. But I've come in with my met metallic, and this is the gold one, lovely, the Sigma. And these bits here, but also I've added a little bit of highlight. But what I've done, my best tip I can give you is on the top for a highlight look, I've almost added almost quite a thick line. In that if you can see that and that's purely because it makes it a little bit wider for me to cut out and then I've just met it with the brown look and that way when I'm cutting it out it just means it's a bit easier for me so that's my top tip and the other thing in when I'm coloring this I've got two greens I just literally had some dark green at the bottom and then light green but I've actually colored this bit so when I cut it out, look, can you see I actually I cheat a bit and I cut the whole of that so it's a whole circle there. Just because for me, and I ignore these bits, sorry Tracy, but those bits have to go, I can't cut them out. So to colour, and again this is my cheats bit of colouring, so we'll be really quick, lids off. If I'm colouring, we'll go for one of our ickle pumpkins, it's the same thing. Just add a red where I've got my shadow. So at the bottom, and Tracy's drawn the lines where you need the shadow. And then with my deeper orange, if I want it a bit deeper, look, I can pick some of the red up. So we'll pick some of the red. So this is a bit, oh, that's a lovely colour. Just pick the red. It'll go back to orange, don't worry. Just helps blend it. If you have a harsh line anywhere, just pick some more colour up and blend. And then for this one, I'm going to come round the eyes with the yellow. And then I've got a, a lighter orange, which I'll then fill in that gap. Blend it into that darker orange. And then lastly, just with the yellow, going to cover the whole thing and for me that's a very quick cheats way of colouring but blending and as it dries you'll see those colours look beautifully together and they almost blend even more and then I would come in with my gold look and just add I've got these lovely dots Tracy's put the dots where we want And then white Posca, a couple of highlights, and maybe some just. And then that's ready to cut out. But as I say, I've got some that I have cut out ready because you don't want to see me cutting out. So we'll pop that out of the way. But like I say, if an evening, sort of if I've finished, or sometimes in the morning, you know, if I'm starting and I'm feeling them a bit maybe I'm not 100%, quite often I'll sit and that's when I do my colouring in and my cutting out and then I have my little tins where I have these cut out ready. So we've got our pumpkins here and our lovely broomstick. Now I wanted to bring in some threads and on the website we've got these gorgeous threads and I've got to be honest I couldn't decide whether to use the gold or the silver so I used both and all I'm going to do is cut myself a bit of a length I think that's enough 
these untangle and I do get them everywhere. And then I'm just going to make myself a little bit of a shape with them. Now I'm going to come in with this lovely silicon adhesive that we have. Don't judge me, mine's got a bit messy. So I'm just going to put it on a piece of acetate at the side here. And what I'm going to do is squeeze some out and pop it on a little just a, you can use um, any sort of little a little skewer or for me I just have this pokey tool that I find very useful and then what I'm going to do is just bunch up this I thought it looked like spider's web that's what I was thinking in my head you know I like to introduce you into my head and if we sort of catch it there again bring in my pokey tool Right, I've got one thread there from my spider's web. I just want to catch it under. Will you just get under there? Come on. Thank you. Right, give my fingers a quick wipe. And then I've got my larger pumpkin. So again, turn it over. Get myself a nice big of my glue and then I'm thinking that can go here and again shape this one I always think they're nice if you can just shape them a bit and a little tip as I say my glue when it gets on my craft mat I get it everywhere so that's why I've just got it on a piece of acetate so if I get any bits of glue it's just on the acetate I'm going to pop that there And then with this, we can either pop it across the front. But what I did was I just snipped mine in half, look. And so I found the easiest way was to add some little bit of glue on here. And then pop that under, just under him there. I don't know why it's always a him. Grab a bit more glue and then where I can put that quite a thick bit because that's going under here look and this way I could actually have it as long as I wanted just pop that under so I just need to get the angle right don't I I mean you could leave it but this way I just thought I could almost bring it in extend it yeah And obviously you can play around my fingers a bit of a wipe. And that's all there is to it, look. And like I say, I'm thinking we've got so many different versions of this that you could make. So if I bring in the original one. And bring in this one. I think I've gone a little bit deeper with my pan pastel on that one. And I think I'm a bit more delicate on this one. Now I don't know which one I prefer. I quite like the ethereal, but then that's quite a... Oh, you see, choices, choices. Mind you, I told you I'm never good at making the same thing twice. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And I hope you have a play and I'd love to see what, what you create. And as I say, I'm off now because I'm so excited. I want to create my Christmas one. I know, I'm just a big kid. You take care. And Eric is here, by the way, so thank you for those who did ask about him. He's snoring, actually, under my desk as we speak. <laughs> Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.